All right. Well, I think we are live in our Alzheimer's and dementia support group. Uh, this is, again, this is Dr. Mike Chua, physical therapist and certified dementia practitioner. And yes, I am one of the many certified dementia practitioners in our group here. Today, we have what you call our Tuesday dementia training. We have a special, special guest. I've asked Dr. Michelle. Uh, she is actually a physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy for almost 20 years. She doesn't look like she's practicing. <laughs> years. No, she looks very young to me. And mm -hmm. I work in many settings, hospitals, outpatient, home care, skilled nursing home, name it. She's done it. The last 20 years have included working with dementia patients. And my, uh, she said her grandmother has been diagnosed with dementia and is currently living in an uh, assisted, living assisted living facility in memory care right now. Uh, she is uh, currently working as a director of rehab in a nursing home and uh, currently also own her own uh, mobile mobile outpatient business and currently lives in Mechanicsburg, PA, Pennsylvania. Is that correct, Michelle? That's all correct. All right. So again, welcome, 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 Ms. Mich Dr. Michelle. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming over. Uh, you know, we've been meaning to do this in our group. Uh, and then uh, thank you for, for coming over. And if you, again, if you are watching live in our, uh, uh, what's called this, Facebook group, please comment live. We want to know if you are there watching and listening. And if you are here in the Zoom, in the Zoom webinar right now, I see uh, several people in our group here uh, uh, connecting. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. But uh, again, let me pass the microphone to Dr. Michelle. Tell us where you're from, what do you do, and uh, how can you please help us understand COVID <laughs> and dementia, uh, Dr. Michelle? Hi, well, Mike, thank you for having me. This is definitely out of my comfort zone to do something like this. So it's good. I'm excited to um, do this. Um, yeah, so I live in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. My family is from here. I moved away for 18 years to Florida and Nebraska, and then kind of my family brought me back to Pennsylvania again. But yes, I've been a PT for almost 20 years now. It's hard to believe. Um, lots of different settings. Um, I really like the skilled nursing facility setting. Um, we have a locked unit where I'm at right now, and I have a lot of patients on my current caseload. I'm, I'm a treating manager and that have dementia. So definitely work with it every day and through this whole COVID situation. Oh, wow. So, uh, well, before we move mm -hmm. on forward to COVID and dementia, could you tell us a little bit more about COVID-19 and how are you guys managing it in your, in your facility? Do you have cases or no? And how are you preventing it or, or something like that? Okay. Um, thankfully, no, we do not have any cases. We Amen. do residents that have been tested, but came out negative. Um, we started, gosh, I think it's been, a, I don't know, we're probably on the fourth week maybe of just major, major infection control. Um, we've got like a rigid cleaning schedule throughout our facility. Um, the staff have been wearing face masks again for close to four weeks now. We have a whole check-in procedure, like probably most of the rest of the, the country with temperature. And have you been around a patient with COVID? Do you have any, you know, respiratory symptoms, that kind of stuff. So we have to answer that coming into the facility, wash our hands, put our face masks on and the same thing when we leave. Um, so I think that's been our biggest thing is that any of our corporate um, meetings, everything is infection control, infection control, infection control. So that's the, the big focus and um, obviously not having anyone else come into the facility to keep it out. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I don't know if you are listening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dementia Warriors, what she, did you hear what she said? Infection control. You have to learn how to uh, control infection, you know, yeah, prevention is the key. So, uh, uh, proper use, don proper donning, proper doffing or proper putting it on, removing it the right way is the key here because you can put all the PPEs in the world. Mm. If you don't know how to take it off properly, uh, you know, you're going to be infected or you're going to be contaminated. So thank you for pointing that out, uh, Michelle, uh, with regards to dementia, how are you managing your, 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 your dementia patients. I know I'm putting you in spot and I know no. <laughs> this is your, this is your comfort zone, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so how are you dealing with it now? I mean, you're wearing mask, you're wearing all this PPE and you've got a dementia patient who has hard of hearing, you know, mm -hmm. unable to follow directions. So how are you managing them now? I mean, 
Is it harder or easier? Uh, can you give us some tips on how to manage our dementia patients that uh, with all the situation right now, whether they have COVID or not? So. Okay. Yeah, um, it's obviously COVID-19 dealing with all the residents has brought an extra challenge. Um, just I believe it's been maybe a week now that we've started putting masks on the residents when they come out of the room as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's that's kind of a you know, up and down thing. Some residents will wear them. Some don't want them. They want to take them off right away. The dementia residents is even more of a challenge because I they bet. obviously don't understand what's going on. And um, so I think um, I've had just a lot of reassuring, a lot of just really trying to connect with the people because first of all, they don't have their family members coming in anymore. Um, our facility is doing a lot of phone calls and trying to do FaceTime videos with families or window visits, whatever they can do to have them see their familiar faces of their family. And so obviously the family members are probably concerned about their family members forgetting who they are because they do have dementia already and they're not visiting them like they used to. So I think one of our, my big thing and our big responsibility in therapy is um, one thing that we do is a lot of staff education on, on infection control. And a lot of things I heard at the beginning when all this kind of started was, well, we can't really do much about people in the dementia unit because they don't understand anything. I said, but we understand and we can work on, for one thing, they used to have four people at a table at the dining room. We've kind of educated, like, look, you need to set one person at each table and lots of cleaning of the tables or anything that the residents are touching um, needs to be like, the residents aren't just going to go and wash their hands on their own. So need to be like having them put hand sanitizer on or taking them to the sink and walking them through the process of washing their hands, like just so that they're doing all the same stuff the rest of us are as far as keeping germs away from them. Um, so that's something we've done. Um, I think another big role that we have is in, in therapy or anyone that's in the healthcare field right now is putting the residents at ease, especially the, the residents with dementia. Um, stopping to, we have in our facility what we call guardian angels and everyone's assigned to a resident just to check on them every day, see how they're doing, maybe visit with them, play cards with them, do something to help them interact since they're not getting out of the room as much um, or being separated from other people. So just trying to keep them, their spirits up, um, keep them moving, keep them um, from getting weak or frail, more frail or ha a higher risk for fall right now. So. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, you mentioned about uh, washing hands in the, in the facility that I work part time yeah. every now and then I would take actually the there's a separate sink there and I would take the actual patient there and they would wash their hand mm -hmm. because um, I don't know. If, I mean, I know Michelle knows it, and, but for the rest of our audience, washing hands is actually a, a nature, you know, people, patients, you know, especially mm -hmm. dementia patients. It's a very good activity for your patients, for your loved ones, because it has the water running there. You know, you can obviously put, obviously, you know, look warm water, not too hot, not too cold. And just the act of rubbing their hands. Oh, that's mm -hmm. very ther therapeutic there, you know, putting lotion on it after and just doing that. So it's, it's, that's a good therapeutic activity there. So yeah. uh, what, what other tips could you share us uh, uh, with regards to COVID-19 and dementia, uh, Michelle? Well, I'm, I'm just curious, like I'm sure a lot of people on here are at facilities or doing some kind of therapy with dementia patients. I'm curious of, as to what other people have been doing at their facilities. I kind of talked through a lot of the stuff we've done, but anyone else have um, suggestions, thoughts, things you guys have been doing at your facilities to help the dementia residents um, stay safe and stay away from the COVID-19? I see Timothy there. I know he's an OT. Uh, maybe he's some. Uh, he has some uh, uh, suggestions there, or any crazy uh, uh, tech tips that he has here. So, well, while but, people respond, I guess one other thing I've done is when the weather is nice, I try to get as many people outside as I can, just because I feel like the outdoors and the fresh air and everything is good for all of us. So, especially them. I had a a lady who's one of my dementia patients today and took her outside in the sun. She doesn't like to do therapy. She's like, you're not going to trick me and take me to the therapy gym. I said, nope, let's just go outside for a walk. So we went outside and got let, let her sit in the sun for a little bit. We did some walking, we did some balance stuff and then we did all outside. So she could have some sunshine on her face. So I think that just helps improve people's moods and helps them feel better and still doing your, your therapy just in a different environment. So. 
Perfect. Perfect. Just, yeah. I mean, just the act of ha getting that the good sunshine is mm -hmm. actually a good therapeutic activity. Uh, you mentioned about walking. I think um, my last patient that I came from, we just walked outside, just put on some weights on their legs and just walk from her house all the way down to the to the next street and then come back. And that was mm -hmm. very therapeutic. So if you have any patients right now, obviously if they can, uh, if you have, you know, if you're living with someone, just go out, uh, go out, get some sunshine, vitamin D, you know, enjoy the, if it, obviously if they're sun, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, just go out there and, and uh, get some good sunshine there. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, where can we reach you, Michelle? What's your email? Any website that we can reach out to you? Mm -hmm. uh, any specific uh, uh, areas that you serve in your area, in, in your practice? Um, it just, so e an email would be, I'm, I'm just in the process of getting my heartbeat business set up, but my email is just Dr. Michelle at at home rehab PA.com. Okay. Dr. Michelle. Okay. Yeah. Let me type that down here and I'll also put it on the webs on the Dr. Michelle at it's at home rehab PA.com at home rehab pa.com all mm -hmm. right well again thank you very much dr michelle appreciate you but before you, i let you go and before we close our quick webinar today uh i would like to remind you ladies and gentlemen outside on dementia wires through to remember the word fast f-a-s-t letter f find friends find a group that will push you to your next level because you are the average of the five people you hang out with so whoever you hang out with guess what? That's going to be you. So right now, obviously you're hanging out with your loved ones, you're hanging out with your dementia patients. You need to find people that's actually going to support you. If you're, let's just, for example, you're, you're here in Tennessee, reach out to a local Alzheimer's association. If you're there in Mechanicsburg, uh, PA, Pennsylvania, <laughs> reach out to Michelle. She might have some resources for you that, uh, you know, that uh, mm. you can use or you can, uh, you can get. So find Find friends that will push you to your next level. The next letter on the word fast, letter A, take action. You got to learn how to take action. When you're a caregiver, when you're a caregiver, you cannot give what you do not have. You cannot give what you do not have. That's like it's called caregiving. You're giving care, right? And you cannot give what you do not have. Same thing with the money. You cannot give money to somebody else if you don't have any money yourself. So take action. What kind of action I'm asking you to do, Dementia Warriors? I'm asking you to find friends. I'm asking you to, to take care of yourself because self-care is not selfish. You got to have to take, you got to learn how to take care of yourself. What's the next letter? Letter S. Shoot for the moon because eventually, you know, keep shooting for the moon. Why? Because eventually you're going to miss it and mm -hmm. you're going to be landing with the stars. So keep shooting, keep learning. You know, you're going to fail when you're taking care of a, a dementia patient. It's not perfect. Every day is, is, is different. Every patient is different. There's not one patient the same. There's no, no same patient. Whether they have the same diagnosis, they're all different. So you're going to fail, you know, you're, you're, you're going to fail with all these techniques that you're trying to implement with your loved ones, with your patients. But guess what? You just keep learning. Just keep moving. Just keep doing it again and again. Why? Because you're doing it not just for the money. You're not doing it for, for because you have responsibility. You're doing this because you care and love them, <laughs> right? And last but not the least, letter T. You got to learn how to teach it. Why? Because when you hear it, you forget. When you see it, you remember. But when you're actually teaching you're teaching somebody, you know, uh, Dr. Michelle is teaching us right now how to be a better caregiver. You know, when you have, for example, you've learned something with your loved ones, you've learned the, you've learned something from your patient, teach it, share that information to other people. Why? Because when they come in and they've seen, oh, this technique is working for this patient or, or for this loved one, guess what? It's going to be easier for them. And that's what I like about me going to different uh, patients uh, for those caregivers who are very supportive. They teach me, oh, Michael, uh, dad likes hunting. Michael, uh, dad loves to talk about this, this, and that. They're teaching me. In that way, when I know what's, uh, uh, what's their favorite thing, and I can use that technique, I can use those words, I can use those uh, hobbies and just bring out the best in them. All right. Again, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Michelle. Uh, any last parting wisdom or words for us? 
No, just thank you, Mike, for having me. And um, yeah, I hope this thing is over soon and we can get on with life with our patients and just be unrestricted with what we do. Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, thank you very much, Dr. Michelle. I appreciate you. And don't forget, yeah. reach out to her. She's from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Her email is drmichelle at athomerehabpa.com. I'm going to put that in the chat box. And of course, in our uh, in our Facebook uh, uh, live in the Alzheimer's and Dementia Support Group. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you very much, Dr. Michelle. appreciate you. And uh, Alzheimer's and Dementia Support Group, be awesome, be great, be excellent, and we will see you around. Thank Bye. you.